Thank you for tuning in. This is Druti Shah and welcome to the Resilient Entrepreneur podcast where every month I bring to you the story of an entrepreneur who has proven to be unstoppable because they are resilient. This podcast is a culmination of my own story of resilience. As someone who taught herself early on to be mentally tough, I came to realize that success stories are great to remain motivated, but true learning happens when you fail, you stumble, you reflect and you rise. This podcast is an attempt to bring to you to my listeners the situations that test your nerves, your grit and your resilience. If you listen closely, you will hear the entrepreneurs reflect and who knows you may have some light bulb moments yourself. The Resilient Entrepreneur is brought to you by C2C OD, a firm that specializes in bringing people and strategy together. And welcome to the brand new season of the Resilient Entrepreneur podcast. This new season is dedicated to social entrepreneurs who are not just grappling the challenges of a new startup, but are also in the business of changing mindsets and impacting lives. With that, Let's meet my guest today. Coming right up. Today's episode marks the second one in season two. And my guest is the visionary fund manager and community creator, Gaurav Singhvi, managing partner at Avenia Ventures and co-founder of We Found a Circle. Gaurav has been living his commitment to making India a vibrant startup nation. A business strategist, serial entrepreneur, super angel investor, startup mentor, and a community creator, Gaurav's journey began from the corporate world, transitioning into an angel investor, where he has mentored over 20 aspiring entrepreneurs and invested in 122 startups. At Avenia Ventures, a semi-regulated early-stage venture capital fund, Gaurav supports innovative startups and fosters an environment of cutting-edge solutions. His involvement with Invest Trust, a tech-enabled angel fund, demonstrates his commitments to nurturing startups and onboarding high net worth investors. Well, that's not all he does, but let me stop here and bring in the man himself to tell you more about his work and the social impact on the larger community of entrepreneurs that it has. Hey, Gaurav, welcome to The Resilient Entrepreneur. We are so excited to have you on our podcast. So, uh, Gaurav, let's straight dive in. What's been your journey like so far? Hi, Dhruti. I'm equally excited to be part of this podcast. And, uh, uh, you know, the uh, journey's been a fantastic up till now. It's almost about 20 years of, uh, 28 years of, uh, you know, profession. So, uh, you know, but I think, uh, uh, you know, I've changed uh, my uh, roles in a different times. You know, I started as a chart accountant, uh, you know, was working with the Reliance Industries Limited for four years, was an exports manager there in Ajira Complex yeah. from 2098 to 2002. And from 2002, I, you know, become a chart accountant who was doing a practice, uh, you know, fundraising for people, was an investment banker. For about 14 years, I did that. In 2016, again, I changed my role as an investor. I started investing in startups and uh, given a lot of my time to that. And in last almost about seven years, six, seven years, I've invested in close to 122 um, startups up till now. And from there, in 2020, we become a community builder where we started We Founder Circle, which is now the most active angel network of India. And in 2022, I onboarded a journey as a fund manager of an Amina Venture. So it's a journey from an employee to an investment banker, to an investor, to a community builder and a fund manager, you know. Amazing. And, uh, and there is so much more to do, I'm sure. Like even when I was looking at your profile or when we've interacted, I always feel uh, you also definitely have a very clear focus in taking India forward in that sense. Perfect, and perfect. Perfect. That. Mm on various forums as well. So Gaurav, you know, thinking about it from a, from the perspective of an entrepreneur, you know, you've been on both sides in a way, right? You've been a co-founder, you've been a founder, and you've also invested in, you said, 122 startups. So you've very closely seen these entrepreneurs operate as well. 
just wanted to understand from your perspective as an insider and an outsider, uh, you know, what are some of the challenges uh, that entrepreneurs are facing today? Oh, so there are multiple challenges. And I think uh, uh, times were the same every time. But I think after 20, 2020, you know, when the pandemic hit and the entire world changed, the entire things have gone to a very different level. So uh, for an entrepreneur, if you ask me a startup, I think the first challenge is the fundraising mm -hmm. that starts with that. Then retaining of a good team. You know, you have raised the capital, but you don't have now the team. That's, a, that's a, again a bigger challenge. Third, having a very good harmony and a good relationship with your co-founder. I have oh, yeah. always seen that after you get really successful, then there is a problem. And if you are not successful, then also there is a problem. If mm -hmm. you are doing average, average, I've seen people going well in their co-founder journey. But whenever I have seen the two extremes, when they are not doing good, they put a blame on each other. If they do good, they want to take the complete share of that, um, uh, you know, that growth. So mm -hmm. those kind of challenges um, I have seen multiple times Um in my journey and as a, a investor as an entrepreneur who's having multiple businesses i've seen that and i i think uh, you know every time uh, you know a resilience of a of an entrepreneur plays a great role in that and what you really wanted to so sometimes people are so very focused in their own approach that they wanted to let go smaller issues in life you know mm -hmm. in terms of you know i'm talking about the co-founder kind of a situation but in terms of having a having a team I'm very clear that if you have a very good attitude, if you have a right attitude, where it is not more of a, sometimes, um, you know, people use passion more in their team, which is less required, attitude is more required. You know, when you are meeting an investor, I think then your, he drives your, he looks at your passion and get impressed by that. But sometimes I see that, um, you know, people are more, when, whenever they are in their offices, more in passion, uh, less with empathy, less with attitude, um, you know, positive attitude. So that that kind of thing also I've have, I have seen. But in all, um, you know, uh, lots and lots of challenges there. But great founders, great people I've seen in my life. I've seen one of the founders, uh, you know, entire business shut down in 2020 because of the pandemic, they just started from a zero, from a complete zero. Husband, wife, co-founders wow. st started from a complete zero. Now, recently, they are raising a capital at a $400 million. Uh, you know, a company Amazing. doing well before pandemic, but was not doing anything for about an year. They were not doing anything, not doing very well. Pivoted yeah. the entire business model. And, uh, you know, Zip is the name of the company. Akash Gupta is the founder and, uh, you know, wife is also part of the, uh, you know, founding team. She's also co-founder. So Zip is ZYPP. And we see them on the streets quite a bit, actually, in Bangalore. Yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. So, they are one, so they are one of our uh, first investments or other people, the first to invest in them. Right. And if we just take that example, and if you could just share with us, um, you know, a couple of things, you you mentioned the word resilience, and I am a big proponent of that as a trait, uh, not just in entrepreneurs, but in people in general, right? Um, what, what do you understand by the term resilience? In your opinion, how have you seen it in entrepreneurs, number one? And the second part of my question was, how did you see the co-founders of Zip uh, showcasing that you said they pivoted were there other aspects to the journey that you would like to share yes yeah, so for me resilience is are uh, you not getting frozen in an at times or in a difficult times yeah when you when you in uh, you know gather all your energy and you know go back to your why why you started something you know, don't get um, drained by by the environment by the challenges you again go back to your why yeah, I started this company for this. This is this was my why. And I wanted to follow that why. The, the path was earlier X. Now I want to take Y. That's okay. That's not a challenge. But I wanted to go back to that Y and I want to achieve that Y. So, you know, that's, that's uh, completely a resilience for me. And if I wanted to talk more about Akash, I've seen that before, before pandemic, they were in a one business model. Eventually, yeah. they have into a delivery services. They have started that, doing that and their entire focus was on an EV vehicle, EV two-wheeler vehicle. And yes. you are in a market where there are giants, some big, very big players are there who are with the huge money and everything. Yes. And when in the environment, you have to be sometimes be really be resilient in the terms of what are you offering? 
Mm-hmm. Are you clear in your offering? You wanted to, and you wanted to give the right messaging to the customers, those who are going to be using it. That yes, this is my offering. I wanted to do this, though it may take some time to reach to other cities and other things. Because sometimes what happens, a big client will always like for multiple cities. They would like to say that if you are delivering here, why don't you deliver five places? Why don't you put hundred bikes? Why don't you put three hundred bikes? You know, sometimes it's not possible because all this requires the capital. Yeah. There you have to talk to some people that say, give me one geography. Start with that. Let, let's go in a slow, gradual way. So there are multiple other things. And I think this all goes down to one thing, which I personally feel that the, the, the skill or the ability of resilience comes from your clarity of thought and the why. If you are more clear about your why, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think it boils down to having a very clear purpose to have your not star in place, right? Yes, and, very true. Yeah. And to see what is it exactly that you're hoping to achieve. Um, so as you rightly said, you know, the why may remain the same and the how may change, right? How do you yeah, go? So why is the purpose? Why is nothing but the purpose? You know, why did you start it? And what's your purpose? Um, what you are doing? Or maybe you are doing a business or anything which uh, that uh, Yes, the how will always change. And you figure out. And I've always seen in my uh, entrepreneurial journey or where I have invested in company, they have started with one plan. After six months, they changed. After two years, they again changed. And I think it applies to almost all the big companies. All the big companies, they started with one business plan. They thought this will work. Eventually, they did not work. They changed that. But you, they were focused on this. I wanted to achieve or I wanted to solve this problem. I wanted to solve this problem. The pur- the way of solving that problem can change. I think exactly. that's the way. Exactly. The other thing I hear you say is that focus on the macro, not the micro. Right. Yes. Uh, so the example that you shared around the geography, right? Just uh, again, sticking to that example that you shared. Uh, let's focus on one geography and then start thinking because you know that if you try to move too fast and if you don't negotiate for time, you are going to fail fast as well. And it's not always necessary to fail fast. Is is that also something that comes up for you? As you- I'm a strong propagator of a single geography starting. I always say, I have always seen people wanted to go to multiple geographies, startup wanted to do, I want to open, open office here, there. I always say, apart from resources, you burn out on your your uh, time also, your energy also. You don't have the bandwidth to do that. And sometimes you just fail because of that, because you wanted to grow too fast in multiple geographies. Rather that have one geography, solve that problem completely in that geography and then go in multiple geography. And that too, in a first, if, if just, a, just to give an example, supposingly you are in Gujarat, first solve the problem in Surat, then you can go to nearby Wapi or to Badodra or to Ahmedabad and then solve that problem. Go geographically also in a very systematic, organically, because it's possible for you to go in the morning to Wapi and come back. And you can have that kind of a situation where it's more, you know, comfortable. And then probably you can go and to come, you can be in pan-India and go to the world also when you have a complete infrastructure, resources, your bandwidth allows. Right. Um, The argument for that, maybe some people would make is that, you know, if I put all my eggs in one basket, which is if I just stick to one geography and I fail miserably over there, then I would have wasted my time, effort and energy on that. So, you know, there is another perspective maybe that comes into play. So is there anything else that people can focus on as they just look at that one geography? And why just that, you know? So the thing that what I want to say that it's better to know the mistakes. It's mm. better to know what all will not work. And if you go in a new geography, it will help you a lot. So don't worry about what's not going to be working. Rather, that's a, that's going to be a wonderful learning for you to not to do those mistakes or do those things in another geography. Because once you are going in a multiple geography, probably you will do the same thing. And you will fail in all of those places with the same reason. And that's not a great idea. Or somewhere, sometimes you will fail for multiple reasons. So mm-hmm. that's not a great idea. So I think, uh, you know, on in business, I think failing or fight facing challenges or something not working is the most common and normal thing. Rather, that's the learning. That's the only learning we, we get in, in any business or in startups that this is not working. Okay, I know this region that this, I need not to do this. Uh, so in business, I always say that knowing this, that what you should not do is more important than uh, knowing that what you should do. <laughs> yes, that is absolutely true. And, uh, you know, 
one of the things which we all hear quite often is this thing around failing that it's okay to fail right yeah. it's completely fine just learn from those mistakes get up and get going right and i think you've seen a lot of entrepreneurs being able to do that today and thanks to that ecosystem exists uh, which is supporting that you know that it's okay, okay to fail uh and know what you're not supposed to do i like that <laughs> so uh definitely in terms of so we talked about the challenges right that entrepreneurs typically face in terms of you know creating the team funding of course is a big one uh figuring out you know your chemistry with your co-founder is equally important in fact i've heard entrepreneurs say that it is so critical because i end up spending most of my life with my co-founder rather than my spouse so having that chemistry check is very important with your co-founder and that literally sometimes decides the fate of the startup as well and we've seen many such examples right so duthi you know i wanted to bring out that because i always say to a founder that uh, in partnership chemistry is more important than mathematics you'll yes. figure out the mathematics you know if you have a right chemistry you will figure out the mathematics how it will be successful more important is chemistry and i think you brought out the right point that if founders are aligned if they are working for a same purpose if they have a great chemistry i have seen great companies build i have seen great great startup build so that's quite true yeah and so when you think about it from a resilience perspective right what are some of the things that you've seen entrepreneurs do maybe you yourself could have done in order to remain resilient so one thing i think i want to touch upon the co-founder hmm how a two co-founders can be resilient at the same time supposingly one uh, is green and another is not so yes. the the kind of homework you have done earlier in the complementing skills you respect each other i think the most important thing which i have talked to when i have talked to founders and why i always say respect the contrarian approach of approaching the thing contrarian thought process the skills they have which you don't have if the two co founders if they start respecting that and if they start believing that that this is the time i am not the best performer in this time he is the best performer and in some other time i am the best performer he is not the best performer you know i think if you know that well when you are starting your journey in in a 6 months or 9 months you can know that resilience is very, is uh, you know can only be done when you give when you give that portion of driving to that founder who is good in that yeah if you find that funding is something that one of my co-founder can drive very well and he can make that happen or he is the right person if you find that say, times are not good give him the complete control give him the country complete you know authority to take the decision then you know sometimes uh, you may be frozen that's okay but uh, you know allow your partner or a co-founder to take that so that i have seen a lot of times um, you know in if you if you talk of that and apart from that if you talk resilience in general i think it it again comes from what's your driving factor hmm. what's your driving factor yeah where from you are driven you know what how how passionate you are towards your purpose Mm-hmm. if you are completely connected if you are somebody who is not going to be shaken with that if you just started a business for a money uh, sometimes it doesn't happen but if you have started for a purpose if you wanted to solve some problem you know you know very deeply you want to do you have a complete passion about that then i think that comes and surrounding also resilience mm, a very important is what kind of people are surrounded what kind of a team members are which and all this you have to work in a time when the good times are yes our good time decisions helps us in taking the decision in the bad times yeah 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 you know when you have a challenging times totally agree and you know i i love the fact that you said that sometimes it's okay to leave it to the expert uh, we say that for leadership as well right that you don't have to be an expert in everything but you should be able to lead a team of experts um yes. so i think as an entrepreneur as well that comes into play uh where you look at your co-founder you figure out that you know you have those uh, in, in your words right the contrarian skill sets in that sense uh and leave it to them and you take up whatever you are good at so i think that's really important and for that leaving your ego aside having deep respect for each other um and you know trusting each other completely uh plays a very important role do you believe gorov that uh you know again in your experience and the journey that you've had so far having a co-founder in itself is critical for any entrepreneur very very critical 
having a co-founder i always refer people that i was reading a book of a uh, you know god different charlie mangal he said the first the most important decision is your life is your life part yeah and same applies to the co-founder the selection of a co-founder is so very important in any business success that you know sometimes we in a desperation or in a need of a co-founder or in a because some of your investor has said that if you will be having a co-founder i will fund you in that need you have just brought a person to fill a gap that does not work that you have to be completely understanding that a co-founder is going to be remaining with me for a very long period of time yeah. and um, you know having a great relationship with uh, him or her is going to be equally important so selection of for me one of the major reason to invest in some startup is having a chemistry right chemistry of a co-founders and where from they are coming are they having a complementing skills or not are they both you know coming from one side certainly there is going to be a dispute if they are just both a good salesman there is going to be a dispute somebody who is a good in raising both are good in raising capital there is going to be a dispute somebody who is in operationally both are good in operationally good there is going to be why because they will feel that each other is um, you know coming in their own way and i am better in this so that's not so you have to always see a complementing skills the chemistry is equally important and then rest i think you know nothing can built if you don't have the respect for each other absolutely wow well, uh, there's so much that you've shared right uh, and i love the fact that you said that work on all of this during good times because during bad times you got to be busy just you know salvaging the situation uh, ensuring that you remain afloat um, so you've talked so far about you know having a very clear purpose you've talked about having the right co-founder where chemistry is more important than the mathematics of the co-founder relationship that you have you've talked about creating the right surroundings in that sense right and that includes uh, you know literally the people you surround yourself with your team members or your stakeholders whoever that is very important uh, and just wanted to understand do you have any rituals or everyday practices uh, that you follow and it could literally be anything in order to you know keep going in order to keep moving forward you did allude to the fact that you know that mindset that positive mindset is important how do you go about ensuring when you're down the dumps i mean it becomes practically impossible to stay afloat sometimes so the, for me i think that's not a problem because i am somebody who's uh, uh, every time motivated or inspired and i i feel uh, touch wood uh, in my life i've not seen very not a very uh, you know down times though challenges come in every time the challenge come i think i lived in a very different way uh, you know i think that whenever there is a challenge i am sitting in a in a stadium where 50000 people are watching me i am on a batting side and the ball is coming as a challenge and i need to put a six on it every time i get excited like that i every time some challenge come i start playing like a best play, batsman of the world i compose myself i get all my options there and i've done that multiple times and i think this has come by doing uh, initially when i was working with myself i was very clear with my purpose what i wanted to do what i wanted to achieve in my life and how i wanted to do so the challenges certainly come but if you want to ask me ritual certainly i do a meditation every day in the morning every day without fail i am a vipassana practitioner so i have i have done multiple vipassana sessions and i do meditation every day that is something which i don't miss any time and i think that gives a great strength to you um, in your daily routine yeah. in our office also there is a practice uh, 10 o'clock 10 o'clock we start office 10 15 there is a prayer four or four minute prayer everybody has to be it's a non religious prayer prayer but you know everybody has to be part of that prayer and i think that's the time everybody gets aligned to the purpose you know and the calmness comes in the entire environment and that's the kind of thing so but not a very big thing but small small things we are doing lot and and that's what matters right eventually i've come to realize this it's not in those big things that we all look at and say oh my god i need to do this i think each one of us certain things work for us um some people do a lot of self talk standing in front of the mirror some people journal um in your case working on your inner strength is something i'm sensing is really important to you um and that peace of mind and whatever it takes in order to bring that sense of calm right and you talked about a non religious prayer which everybody does for four minutes i think that's a great practice because um again you are surrounded by your team members so if it, for you to remain calm you need to ensure that everyone else is certain 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 in their mindset so uh, so great to hear that and um, what you mentioned about uh, you know batting 
with a stadium full of 50,000 people and all eyes on you. I think that's a very powerful practice of visualization, Gaurav. Yes. And um, a lot of people do that, um, some not so successfully, but I think it's a great practice because uh, you put yourself in that situation and you say that, I got this, right? And and you just go for it. You hit that six, uh, which helps your team win in that sense. So visualization is very powerful. Uh, I think even as a um, as I was studying to become a leadership coach, I studied that as one of the most important aspects, which can shift your perspective significantly uh, when you're down the dumps sometimes, right? When okay. or when you feel like you're going there, so uh, just brings you back and brings back your energy. I think to keep self-talk is very important. Self-talk is something which is the most important thing for any individual. And you have to give time, maybe five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. But person should always be talking. And I think all, all the best, uh, you know, entrepreneurs or the more great entrepreneurs of the world, give that time to themselves. Talking to yourselves is the most important thing. Five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes. You know, I think it's uh, aligns, it, uh, aligns everything. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, we are always talking to ourselves. I think it's sometimes that re-scripting is needed. You know, we are we are quick to criticize ourselves, but uh, we are penny pinchers when it comes to appreciating ourselves. So I think that self-talk in the sense, something that pumps you up, that energizes you and that motivates you, I think it's super, super important. So I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate that. Um any other resources, Gaurav, that you would want to share with our listeners um, in order to either remain resilient or even from an entrepreneurial startup point of view? Well, so now, I think when we grew up, the resources were not that much because the book was the only uh, way to motivate yourself or to get to know more about people, what they are doing, their stories and other things. But now with the YouTube uh, and other things, so many resources are there. I think people should really uh, be looking at that kind of a thing and you should they should be reading. I am somebody who is a great proponent of books. I, 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 won't, I say somebody that book is the best teacher. No other thing can teach you more good. And if you wanted to lead, you have to read. That's what I have read some 20, 25 years before. And I, since then, it is something which I read every day. I have, I will be having one or two books in my bag or in my table. And every time, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm reading. So I think the most important thing is books in a, in last few years, I think that importance of book reading is going down, but I want to encourage people that, uh, you know, it's important to read a book. Yeah. And, and, uh... So there is a quote that says, right, a book will take you to places you didn't even know existed. In that case. Uh, they take you on a journey, whether you're reading uh, a James Dyson book or a Walt Disney book or whatever, whatever suits you, right? Whether it's a biography or a fiction or whatever it is, but it does take you on a journey of its own. Um, Gaurav, thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you and I'm sure the listeners are going to take away so much from this conversation. There's so many nuggets of wisdom that you shared. Um, and I think it's just, you know, you got to start somewhere. If if you feel like you're running low on your fuel of resilience, then I think you need to start somewhere. It could be meditation, right? You said, or reading the right books or watching some videos or visualization or positive reinforcement in terms of self-talk. Uh, I think the sky is the limit. There's a lot out there and people just need to get started. Pick one that suits you. <laughs> yeah, certainly. So I think it, it certainly, as you said, that it depends on each individual, what they like, how they wanted to take it up, how they wanted to do it. But yes, you have to create your own tool sets. You have to really create your tool sets to be more resilient and you know the challenges you wanted to face in life. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Gaurav. Once again, really appreciate you joining us um, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Mm, I still have a smile on my face after having this conversation with Gaurav and, you know, very few people have that effect on me. So I'm happy I had the opportunity to speak with someone who is so positive and I'm sure he spreads this positivity uh, around him, you know, with the entrepreneurs that he's mentoring or working with. So, you know, I'm jealous of the people out there who are so closely connected with Gaurav. Um, you know, if you look at our video trailers, you'll see that he was constantly smiling while the camera was on. He was uh, leaning in. He was interested in what was going on. And I think that's a great trait to have 
whether you are an investor or an entrepreneur, stay invested uh, for the right reasons in the conversations that you're having. I think that's brilliant. So, uh, you know, I'm also a big believer in growth mindset and clearly Gaurav lives by it too. It, it has been a brilliant conversation. So let me bring in my producer, Ramuna. Um, what did you think of this conversation? Thanks, Ruthi. Completely agree with you on the whole positive mindset bit. I think it was great to actually meet someone like him. Um, w- w- one thing he mentions, right, that yes, as an entrepreneur, you dream big, mm-hmm. uh, you aim high, but it's also equally important to have a focused approach yep. if you're starting something new. That really struck a chord with me. Mm-hmm. And one other thing you mentioned is also, again, uh, the importance of solid partnerships. Yeah. When you're doing anything, right, and more so when you're an entrepreneur and starting a new venture, the importance of having great partners on board should be. Absolutely. Like and, you know, I'm going to uh, leave our listeners with the one thing that is going to stay with me for quite some time. It's about the chemistry more than the mathematics. So let's remember that. And with that, adios. I'll see you next time with another episode of an inspiring entrepreneur who is making a great impact on not just the community, but on the world at large, but just doing what they are doing and being resilient at that. So thank you so much, listeners, for tuning in to the Resilient Entrepreneur Podcast. We'll see you next time. Until then, signing off. This is Truthi Shah. Bye-bye.